this is Bao, and welcome to a, another chess improvement video, episode number nine. Wait, no, ten. Yeah. Um, once again, we'll be doing the same thing we've been doing all this time. We're gonna be uh, focusing on tactical motifs. Today is not very different from any other day. We're going to be focusing on pins. And uh, yeah, these are one move pin puzzles. And um, I don't think there's anything else to say. So let's just get started. And we're going to do 20, just as we've done in the previous episodes. And uh, we'll see how far we get with that. Oh, I just, I just uh, <laughs> did a minimal amount of exercise that most toddlers can do. And I'm, I'm wiped out. But uh, yeah, uh, hopefully that's helped my brain a little. Uh, I went out for drinks with my coworkers today, so I'm my brain might not be as fast as normal. So we'll see how this goes. Um, with that said, smooth transition into the puzzle itself. So there's the king, there's a pawn, and there's my rook, and there's a pin going on with that pawn on g2 which means this queen actually isn't guarded by anything which means that I can just take the queen for free so if we continue the puzzle I guess it would be queen takes queen on f3 um, let's say rook takes rook queen takes rook and it will be queen versus two minor pieces which can be pretty hard but um, two bishops versus a queen it's a f interesting and difficult dynamic, but I'm I'm sure if we are able to get in some checks, we can peck out each of the bishops over time. So, oh my god, what the fuck is this? All-time high tactics activity streak. Weak streaks. Six. Six. Uh, solve tactics problems for personal record number of weeks in a row. Oh, six. Wow, six weeks of tactics. Cool. Uh, <coughs> yeah, so take the queen for free, yay! And some kind of random achievement that I don't, I don't even know. Um, okay, so same sort of thing here. Queen's on, king's on h7. Pawn is on f7, pinned by my rook, and so this knight is not actually defended. We do have to be careful as to considering what might happen after queen takes knight because there is a queen to c1 check and uh, I have no luft however thankfully after I take the knight and if queen does c1 then we can <coughs> use queen to e1 to block that right out so we are safe to take the knight and still have a defensive response for the back rank mate neato two out of two Okay, this is another simple pin today. King's on h8, rook's on h3, there's a pawn. That bishop is not actually defending anything, or not defended by the pawn. So the queen can take, yummy yummy, in my tummy. Are there things I have to look out for? I think the scariest potential thing would be like, rook to c2, or no, rook to c2, there's bishop to bishop from d3 defending it so potentially rook to c1 uh take and then queen comes in but then of course there's something like uh knight to f1 oh that would lose us a queen so probably not that one uh something along those lines though yeah i mean we don't even have to take because the knight's defending on f2 so uh, i'm sure we can get out of this with no problem In fact, there might have been counterplay on the H line, potentially, but I'm not exactly sure. Okay, so here's an interesting and dangerous one. They are very, very close to some kind of mating net. I mean, queen to g2, if not for the bishop there, would be precariously dangerous. <coughs> what do we have to work with? We have this pin uh, between the king on e7 and our queen on h4 with the pawn on f6. And we also have a potential pin with this pawn on h5 uh, to that free rook. But 
we uh, yeah we're looking for some kind of very strong move to get us out oh and here's another pin of course so we have a pin between the king and our rook on e1 with the pawn on e6 however uh, that would not be wise to make use of that pin and take the bishop currently because we would be we would be losing a defender for our e1 rook which is a uh, not so good. Hmm. So, a lot of potential pins, but now we have to find a way to use it. Dun, da, 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 Hey. So, pretty interesting situation. Uh, not even looking at pins, something that comes to mind is this queen, we can definitely kind of shrug it off by doing something like rook to e2, I think. Uh, rook takes rook on e2, bishop takes rook on e2, this rook is still defended on our back rank. Uh, queen can't take the bishop because of that, so we do fend, we do like shrug off one of the attackers which is pretty good, but I don't think that is what the puzzle wants us to do. Another interesting one is uh, the knight can go to g5 for a check, opening up the queen to queen. If there was another attacker on f2, uh, it would be delicious to just take that queen. Um, <coughs> but there's easily, so check, take, queen takes queen, rook takes queen, oh, can't take, so it'd have to take a, <laughs> let's use real, real annotation here, uh, knight to f5 check, uh, can't take with a pawn on the e-file, so g takes f5, uh, queen takes a 4 rook takes a 4 Mm, then we could finish off with rook takes d5, but at which point we'd have lost one of the attackers and we would be kind of equal on equal on stuff. So that's not that great. Uh, I know we were talking about how we shouldn't take the bishop, but now kind of thinking about that calculation, there is something to losing the rook on e1, and uh, hear me out, it goes like this. Rook takes bishop on d5, pawn cannot take back, queen takes e1, if that's the case, she's lost the rook defender, and so at that point we can sack our knight with the check on f5, at which point king has to move, or pawn takes knight, and we would get the queen, and I think that would be the right solution to this puzzle. Yay. So we, uh, this was good. We just had to calculate a little further and we meandered to the answer by thinking about some calculations of potential, potential checks with a knight and whatnot. <coughs> okay, so here is a pin. Here's the rook, here's a pawn, I can take the knight. If the knight takes the rook, then uh, I just get another rook. So either way, it looks like a free knight. Uh, or at least that is correct to say. Free material gained from this. However, it happens. Uh, what is going on here? I am in check and this bishop is defended solely by this pawn. If I take with the queen to get out of check, the pawn has to take, at which point I will be able to take the queen. So that looks pretty awesome. Because the pawn is pinned on c5. I don't feel like I have to overly explicitly uh, overly explicitly Ex explain myself anymore unless it's a difficult calculation at this point uh, the simpler mating 
uh, not the mating, I'm sorry, the simpler pin tactics puzzles are getting to the point where they're pretty obvious. So I feel like we're, we shouldn't waste too much time on trying to explain them. When we get to the more difficult ones, or the ones that I find difficult, uh, I still think it's a good idea to try to calculate out the lines, but these are fairly simple today. This is beautiful. I Oh my gosh, this is a very beautiful one. Uh, discovered mating with a pin. Uh, if this knight wasn't here, the bishop on g2 would be pinned because of my queen and the king on g1, the g file. So if I move my knight to f2, the bishop can't take. King is actually stuck. Knight can't be taken. King can't move to h2 either because of the bishop, and that is a very, very beautiful smothered mate. Oof, I like that one. That is, mm, that is pretty. That is really pretty. Okay. Um, let's see what we have here. Boy, there sure are a lot of pieces on this diagonal. If we could only get rid of some of them, that would be great. And uh, yeah, so what can happen here is rook takes bishop on d5. If queen takes rook on d5, then immediately after, we'll have bishop to e4, pinning the queen to the king, all on this a2, g8 diagonal. So this bishop on d5 is actually free. Excuse me. Oh my goodness. Exercising. It's great for... Uh, oh. It's great for digestion. Okay, we've uh, we've seen this pattern already tonight. I don't even know what puzzle number we're on. This bishop is not actually safe. This pawn is overloaded, pinned between the king and my rook, and uh, not actually defending that. So, yes. Oh, right. Okay, that's what we were gonna do tonight. I thought I was missing something. Okay, well we're at tenth puzzle, but. Let's finish the tenth puzzle and then we'll reset. We will adjust our uh, puzzle set today as we generally do, uh, as we like to do, because there are some things that we can do to make this a little bit more interesting tonight. So we have the pawn that's pinned by our rook and our queen on d5. If uh, this pawn doesn't exist, Let's say the queen takes the rook, pawn takes the rook, or pawn takes my queen on e4. Rook takes rook, check, and uh, there can be bishop. Uh, ch -ch -ch. There can be bishop to c8 to block. Rook takes c8, at which point there's a double attack on the king and the queen. Queen has to take, bishop takes, at which point, what material are we at? He has nothing. <laughs> no pieces except pawns and I would have a uh, bishop and a rook. So it would be a very bad idea to take this rook. Okay, so this is what we're going to do. I know we're sometimes getting decent puzzles, but we are definitely, uh, or at least I'm definitely wondering if we're getting repeated puzzles that we've gotten right. And uh, as we're getting better, I think for repetition's sake, it's good that we're getting the same puzzles right now. But later on, as we're improving, I don't think we want to keep seeing the same puzzles. So what we can do is... Um, burr, burr, burr. Oops, that's not where I meant to go. We can go to Problems, Custom Set, Manage Set, Open Our Pins, Show, and then we can say only use... Um, nope, that's not, that's not it. Previous Attempts, here we go. History filter. Problems I got wrong at least. Problems I got right at least. Problems I have never tried. Problems I never got right. Would be the puzzle set we would want to do. Does this seem right? Why does that do? Hmm. That doesn't seem right. Interesting. 
Let's go back to problem features and switch. Okay. Hmm. Let's pin, show, and switch. Interesting. Were there 8,861 problems before? I mean, I guess they could have potentially added more. Standard. Tactics tags. No tactics tags for our pins. Tag is. Hmm. Interesting. Okay, let's do a search now. 780. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's orders of magnitude different. Okay, number of moves is 1. Uh, rating 0 to 35. Da, 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 quality, all of them. Number of pieces. Game move. Okay. So we have 789, which sounds very much closer, even if they added a couple of problems. Then we can go to previous attempts. Then we can do problems I've never got right and do a search again. And we're down to here. But the issue is oh, set options. Here we go. Set pins. Rating adjustment method. Target my rating. Sorted, spaced, repetition. Uh, so for s creating the set, we can minimize it each pi each time by setting it to problems I have never got right, but we will have to do it over and over again. There's advanced history filter. Okay, correct attempts range, failed attempts range. There is I don't think any kind of dynamic way to set the set the problem sets so that they will dynamically adjust as we do our sets. So that means every time, uh, every day, when we do the pins again, or any uh, tactical motif training for that matter, we will always want to come here and do problems I always, <laughs> I always, I never got right, do a search, and then save the set again. That way, uh, we will never get the same problems that we got right on a previous day. Uh, it would be a bother every time to go in here and uh, reset this over and over again after each problem. But doing it daily before the video I think is fine, or during the video. Because uh, if I'm going to suffer having to come in here and do this every time, you're going to have to as well. <laughs> That's why I have no viewers. That's the reason. Not any other reason. Right. Okay, so these should all be n fairly new problems now that we're getting. So that's cool. That's exciting. And I have 10 more to do today. So, yeah, that's very cool. But I don't see a pin. Okay, let's see what we have here. Uh... There is a diagonal vulnerable with this bishop. However, the bishop does have a defender with a queen on b7. But I also see a beautiful diagonal here, potentially attacked by this bishop. So the puzzle goes, rook takes bishop. If queen takes rook, very similar to that other puzzle we did, we have bishop to b3, putting the pin into the diagonal with the king over on g8. So, yeah, that looks like the puzzle. Nice. One out of one. Excuse me for all the burping. Okay. Knight is pinned to the king if I take. Actually, that's not the <laughs> that's not the pin we should be talking about. I'm sorry. But, yes, knight is pinned to the king. Bishop will take the knight. But there's a secondary pin, which is knight is pinned to this rook. If the knight moves out of the way, no defenders on the rook, and we'll get a free rook. So, in the end, the way this will go is bishop takes knight d4, knight takes bishop d4, rook takes rook on e1. And we will be up a major piece after that. Or I guess if they don't move, then there's nothing to worry about. And we'll get a pawn. Delicious, delicious, delicious pawn. And then, furthermore, we could probably do something like bishop to c3 afterwards, forcing the rook to move, or the knight takes, and then we take the rook, so that that all looks pretty sweet. We're in check. Okay. Uh, um, 
So we're in check, and the move would be if this knight was not pinned, uh, queen, king takes queen, then knight could potentially go to something like uh, f4, knight takes on f4, double check on the queen and the king, and then uh, take the queen while the king has to move out of the way and then take some other pieces. It would be delicious. However, um, that knight's pinned. So I can just take. And then he's going to have to waste a tempo on something. At which point I'm just going to take that knight and then move my king away. So, yeah. Then I'll be up by a minor piece and I'm totes okay with that. Okay, let's look here. There is some shenanigans happening with the double rooks on the D file. That's quite strong. Mm -hmm. well, there is a specific combination of moves that has to be done to take whatever's on D4. Uh, the first thought might be to think bishop takes bishop on D4. Then there's rook takes bishop on d4, rook takes bishop on d4, rook takes rook on d4. Knight goes up, or pawn goes up to b2, but rook is in time to go to b3. Let's think about it from the other point where rook would take bishop, rook takes bishop, rook takes rook, rook is pinned, we move the pawn but then the rook can go and attack it. So we have to think of a different method. And the method is the pawn just moving to b2 because as scary as this bishop looks, in taking the pawn on b2, it can't, it's pinned. So there's potentially something like pawn goes to b2 and bishop can't take. But what bishop can do at this point would be bishop takes bishop and we don't have any connectors or defenders for that uh, pawn, so not very great in uh, trying to get there on time. If we go back to that rook idea, rook takes bishop, rook takes rook, bishop takes rook, rook takes rook. Now we have enough time to move our rook t to b2, and that is uh, that's pretty staggeringly dangerous. Why doesn't it work out that way when we go the other way? Bishop takes bishop check, rook takes rook, rook takes rook, rook takes rook. Oh, I guess it does work. I was just thinking about the pawn move first. Uh, so is that good? Is that what we're trying to do? We're going for a pawn promotion in this situation or what? Hmm. I mean, this is very close from some kind of back rank shenanigans, the pawn is. Bishop takes bishop, rook takes bishop, pawn to b2, rook takes rook, and we have nothing. So that's no good. Hmm. Hmm, hmm, Oh, here's an idea. What about rook takes bishop, rook takes rook, and then we slide our rook out to d8. Then we have two attackers on the rook. He's pinned, and whatever move happens afterwards, we will be able to take a rook afterwards. So then we'd be up by a minor piece, major piece. Let's see, rook and that. So we're down two points and then yeah we make up the rook again so that's good mm. so basically a rook for a rook and yeah rook and a bishop so that's a minor piece okay so i think that's the answer there cool okay well it's a one move puzzle so we don't get to see the rest but i think you guys got a good idea of what's going on okay we're white in this scenario Let's see what kind of pins we have going on here. There is a pin with this uh, bish pawn on c4, queen to queen pin. And so that means this bishop 
isn't actually defended, which means this knight can safely take this bishop with no repercussions. And if the pawn takes, then we get a queen. If he tries to promote, then we move our uh, rook, and then we would be up by a huge amount. So that's five of five. Five out of five, so that's great. Let's see here. Uh, we've seen this pin many, many times. This rook actually not defended by this pawn because of the queen in the way of the pin between the rook, our rook, and his queen. So he just gave us a free rook. Yay! Six out of six. Four more boys and girls. Uh, I mean, nobody, honestly. Nobody's actually watching this, so... Um, let's see here. Same exact puzzle as the other one. This rook is defended by this pawn. However, this pawn is pin pinned between our rook on d1 and his queen on d7. So I'm going to take that rook. All right, seven out of seven. Okay, mm we are black in this situation. Do I have some kind of sweet, sweet checkmate? Yes, I do. So usually without this knight, because of the king on the third file or row and the other king on the first row or file, now if we move our rook over, that would be checkmate, but there's a block with the knight that could potentially happen. However, it can't potentially happen because this knight is pinned by our bishop on f4, f5 to the king on h3. So that means we can still happily checkmate. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Okay, so we're white in this situation. Let's see where the pin is. This is an interesting and precarious situation as it looks like. This queen is pinned by our queen currently. So that's something we should make use of. The question is how we're going to make use of it. Uh, an easy kind of an easy kind of move I see quickly is that there's only one defender on the knight on e7, so our rook could simply take right now, and that wouldn't really be an issue. Alternatively, our queen could take as well. Uh, Either way, we're putting the queen in a little bit of pressure. I think if we take with the queen, the queen would take, and then we could take with our rook, simplifying the position while maintaining a material advantage, as well as keeping tempo by uh, putting some pressure on that bishop as well. So that would be neat. But the question is, is there something stronger? Uh, as we should be learning over time, if there is a mate potential, then we should take the mate potential over anything else. Mm. For instance, can we do some kind of tricky queen move? Maybe a queen to queen trade, forcing the king out and then doing some mating threats that I do not see currently. Queen to queen, queen takes queen f7, king takes queen f7. There isn't any place the rook can easily move to. So, no, I don't really see anything. Question about the situation is, is this pin really something to be interested in? Mm, I don't know. It doesn't look that fantastic it seems like a fairly simple trade where queen takes knight queen takes queen and then rook takes queen and then i'm up a minor piece uh, but there are a lot of active pieces so we should probably think this through queen takes queen what are some alternatives that the queen can do queen's not pinned anymore so it could potentially hit f2 which puts three major pieces very close to my king which is fairly scary but after queen takes f2, now with the queen, now with our queen on e7, we have a lot of potential mating nets, I think. Something like queen to e6 check looks incredibly strong and in fact looks like a maiden one. 
if not for the queen blocking back on f6. So minor piece for a pawn and then a trade down, I'm kind of okay with that. Mm -mm -mm. Hmm. Potentially, we can keep the queen there by taking with the rook as well. So instead of queen takes knight, we can do rook takes knight and the queen stuck and the only move it has at that point is to take the queen and then we would take with the rook on e8 solidifying the fact that she can't even take our pawn which probably is the preferred method that go they go for even though we don't have that tempo of attack on that bishop on b7 am i okay with that yeah i guess i'm okay with that um I'm not a greedy man. Oh, that's wrong though. Oh, there was a mate that I didn't see. Oh, that's great. Yeah. Mm. That's that's good. That's good. Yeah, I missed the mate completely. Oh, it just shows that I really need to just focus more on the mates as well. Uh, due to the pin by the queen, like even if the rook moves to e6, queen can't take it. What's the queen going to do? And then there's honestly no place for the king to go. Ugh. That is a shame. I wish I had seen that one. That is very pretty as well. I really, really like that. Well, we're one down. I guess we're going for 19 out of 20 today. I'm guessing most of these puzzles are going to be fairly easy. But who knows? Maybe they'll be challenging as well. Oh, we don't know. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Our rook is potentially still safe over here. Uh, oh, well, so the queen is on d2. Our rook is on b2. There is a pawn being pinned. It's also defending this lovely bishop on b3. But it's not actually defending it, and there we go another easy one and that was nine out of ten so that was our last puzzle so I got the second to the last puzzle wrong and that's very sad very very sad but oh well what can you do you win some and you lose some that's not cliche at all so I think just for makeup let's do this puzzle fairly simple I think I guess we'll see as we start calculating Pawn is defending the knight, but not really. Holy cow, there's so many defenders on this knight. We only have three attackers. He has potentially three defenders, but not really. He only has two defenders, in which case we can start trading. Oh. Trading. And uh, apparently they want me to trade with the rook instead of the bishop because understandably the queen now has to move somewhere and then we can trade down the rook for the rook and it just gets messier and messier for them over time and i mean if the queen moves out of the way i mean the only way to defend the bishop would be for the queen to move to d7 so if that's the case uh we can do rook takes bishop there if queen takes then our queen could take on f6 and that could potentially be nasty also there's bishop to c4 which would pin the queen to the king afterwards so that's all sorts of crap that is all sorts of crap so losing that bishop uh is almost a secondary thing that happens from this so that's neat well we're at 10 out of 11 i made a boo-boo today i should have calculated a little bit more but i got a little anxious i think and I'll be interested to see how long this uh, video has taken. Uh, I feel like a lot of the puzzles today were fairly easy compared to the other ones that we've done so far. Uh, I don't know if that means that we're getting faster or if the puzzles are just... There's a lot of easy ones that we're hitting right now. Uh, it's hard to say without going into the set and then like raising the difficulty or whatever. Mm, but I don't know that felt good seemed to be seeing the pins fairly well 20 was good and I think I'll keep to 20 for now if the puzzle set 
next time after we remove all of the ones we got right um, if the puzzle set if the 20 problems go too quickly then uh, yeah we'll raise the stakes somehow we'll move it to 25 puzzles and uh, we'll keep chugging along and seeing as how with these pin puzzles there's with the one move pin puzzles there's only like 700 of them we could potentially do all of them before we, we move on to the next tactical motif 700 divided by 20 is something around 30 35 yeah 35 episodes of this okay that no that's that sounds like way too much I don't want to do 35 episodes of pins that sounds ridiculous we'll see how much faster I get I mean if we start chugging along and doing like 100 100 at a time that will that will be nice but I don't think that's gonna happen is it really 35 because yeah times 3 for 20 would be 60 uh, and then so we'd have to do 10 more oh my gosh no we're not doing 35 pin tactical motifs um, if anything it should kind of motivate me to just do more tactical motifs outside of my time so that we don't have to keep on doing them but there's no reason why we have to finish all 700 of them either um, ba -ba 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 -ba. what more is there to say yeah I'm on the fence about doing the pin set next time perchance we can do some mates next time for some diversity or we can do forks um, right now I'm thinking I'll do mates because it seems like my mating calculations isn't as strong as I would like it to be uh, so maybe potentially we'll do some a bunch of made in twos next time which I think will be a really fun one because you know just only doing made in one puzzles or I mean one move puzzles is uh it gets old after a while the redundancy can be staggering and demotivating so yeah thanks for watching again this was a I feel like it was a fairly short episode but I'm not really sure uh, I guess I'll check when I start uploading the video and uh, if you guys like this video then hit that uh, hit that hate button don't don't hit the like button Just hit the other button uh, write some terrible things in the comments and uh, yeah unsubscribe if you have subscribed Ooh, I have no idea who that is or what they're playing okay well thanks for watching guys I'll see you later